Coming up next on Let's Refresh with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. Hello, I know you're ready for a great Thanksgiving message and I have one. You know I'm always ready and I'm always thankful in spite of what's going on with COVID-19, the racial tension, but I want to bring a message to you. I know it's going to bring you into an atmosphere and an environment of thanksgiving and gratitude towards God. So watch this. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and verse 9 it says finally brethren whatever things the, <laughs> you listen to this whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of a good report if there be any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, anything praiseworthy. It says, meditate on these things. Verse 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Father, we thank you. We bless you for these few moments that we're in right now. And Father, we cancel out any selfish spirit that doesn't want to help the people who are in this room or the people who are streaming. We thank you now for the Holy Spirit moving in and throughout this room to lift those who have been torn down by tragedy, to lift those who have, have experienced devastation in their lives. That's what we're here tonight for. Not for our own good and not for our convenience, but for the help of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Uh, my title tonight is Thoughts That Produce Thankful Hearts. Thoughts That Produce Thankful Hearts. Thoughts That Produce Thankful Hearts. Now, I want to say something real quickly, uh, and I'll, I'll accelerate in just a moment, but it would be a bad thing if you had just crashed and you were wounded pretty bad and you went to the hospital and it was closed. God had no, inter uh, no intentions for the church to not be active when all hell is breaking loose on the world. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We can't shut down. In fact, every called and anointed person should be stirred now because of the devastation that's going on in the world. We should be play praying for the Blanchard family. We should be praying for the McKinney family. We should be praying for all those families that, that are going to go into a day tomorrow without children. I'm not talking about adults, without children that were once in their lives. Now, I'm going to get into my message, but I got to lay some groundwork. I don't understand people who have children who are not sympathetic or compassionate. I don't understand that. But I'm here to help tonight. Anybody that was lost through uh, premature death or uh, natural death, uh, we're going to help you. We're going to help you tonight. So in the passage of scripture, it says, finally, brethren. So it's talking about those who ex have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, this verse of scripture is not for you. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then this scripture is for you. Because there's not much comfort for those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. But there is much comfort for those who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, and you're considered brothers. So number one, I want to get into that. Brothers and sisters in Christ should have positive perspectives on life. Brothers and sisters in Christ should have a positive perspective on life. Brothers and sisters who are in Christ should have a positive perspective on life. I go through a lot of stuff, but the way I think determines my perspective. Now you can take two individuals, one who suffered uh, a suicide in their family and another 
who has suffered suicide in their family. And the thinking or the thought pattern is going to determine the productivity that comes out of them after that. That's why you see some people recover quickly and some people don't recover at all. Reason being one thinks differently than the other one. It is not that God loves one more than the other, it's their thought pattern. So it's not that I don't go through and you don't go through, I just think differently about what I'm going through. You understand what I'm saying? And if your thoughts are different about what you're going through, the outcome will be different for those who are going through. It's all uh, based on how you perceive. If a, a born-again believer should have a positive perspective on everything that happens to them in life. Well, they tried to destroy me. Well, they made me. You understand what they said? So I don't get caught up in what they've done to me. I get caught up on what God revealed through me. It's all in the way that we think and how we process information. God wanted to change your mind. You got saved at the altar, but that did not change your mind. That's why we still got crooks in the church. Excuse me. <laughs> it, it takes time to transform your mind from negativity to positive things. It, it takes you coming and sitting in the midst and receiving the word of God. The, by the washing of the water by the word. What the word does, it begins to wash the negativity, the negative response out of your mind. So now it's the same thing, but you respond differently because you think differently about it. So when you get born again, they don't need to put you right in leadership. Your mind has to change and we have high level people with negative spirits because they were negative when they were in the world and their minds have not been washed with the word of God. They just like the hype. No, you got to have a word to cleanse your head or you're going to see things based on your thought pattern and that thing may not be bad but in your head it's bad. So we have to take people through this process of washing their minds. Because the Bible has told us in Philippians what we ought to think about things. But are we thinking the way that God told us in Philippians how to think about things? The answer to that is no. Anything we hear, even if it's positive, if we put a negative spin on it because negative t uh, thoughts and negative vibes are on the inside of us. So many of us who are negative like that, we won't be able to overcome tragedy. If tragedy hits, for some of us, we create some type of avenue for those who are traveling the same road that we travel. For others of us, we go into depression and we don't ever function again for the next year, the next two years, next three years, all the way up to five to 10 years. When's the last time you had a positive thought? That's why he has to tell us. He said, he said in his word, brethren, talking about the brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be, if there is anything praiseworthy. He said, this is what I want you to think on, meditate over and over and over and over again. You want to know why you're depressed? Because you're thinking over and over and over again on something negative. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it's not enough to come to the platform and give your life to Jesus Christ. That is not enough. We are not grown up until our thinking changes. Our negative thoughts is a sign of our immaturity. We are the church, but we gotta grow up. We think like where we came from, the house we were raised in. Why do you not trust? Because you're negative in your thinking. Number two. Your mind is a terrible thing to waste. 
Y'all remember that? Your mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's an awful thing to go through your entire day thinking negative thoughts all day long. You are wasting your mind. Your mind could be creative. Your mind could take you to places and others to places that there were no, uh, no thoughts prior to that. But if you're constantly thinking negative, your mind is a terrible thing to waste. Number two, meditating or rehearsing positive things in your mind will produce praise. Tasha Herbert, we wonder why aren't people praising consistently? Because they're not thinking consistently. They only praise on the days that they're thinking good. That is the only time people praise. When they have a positive attitude about life, they praise. Which means if something bad happens between home and the church, it shuts down praise. Apostle, that's what's happening. They blaming everybody else. You created that image in your mind. If you don't get control over your mind, you're as far as you're going. Because for every uh, positive thought, there's a lot of negative thoughts in your mind while you're trying to rebuke the devil that will kill your Thanksgiving. And it will kill your Christmas. How many times are you going to meditate means to mutter. It means to rehearse over and over again. It's like the worry you do. How many times did that thing happen? How many times did you play it in your mind? It happened one time. How many times, how many years you've been playing that scenario over and over and over? It only happened one time, but why are you, you, you're meditating. That's another form of negative meditation. Now it's getting worse. Now, now you hate people you shouldn't hate. Because you're rehearsing it and you're rehearsing it. And I'll tell you in a minute, I'm not going to pay for what they've done to you. You better change your meditation. Because I ain't scared of none of y'all. I done told you the only thing that makes you look funny at me is that you're meditating on something that doesn't even exist in the day that you're in. But your mind will cause you to see it as happening right now. Why can't you have a great Thanksgiving? You got to think better about your Thanksgiving and then you can have a great Thanksgiving. Look, you're not in the hospital right now. You're not on a stretcher right now. So change your thinking and start thinking about how good God is. Cause you could have been dead, sleeping at some lonely grave. Yeah, your family members are dead, but not you. That's worth your praise. Where my brother died, where my mama died, but you still here. That's worth your praise. I watch people all the time. I watch when their when their attitude changes. I'm like, what have you been thinking about? <laughs> I'm like, what what have you been thinking about today? What have you been thinking about that to change your attitude? You were turning cartwheels Sunday. Now you come in here with your knuckles dragging the ground. What have you been thinking about? It is your thought pattern. It can it can kill your day. It can put clouds on a sunny day. It, it can make it'll, it'll take you into a night season when you're in a day season. It can take you into the winter when you're in the summer. It, 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 will, it will mess up a good marriage. It'll mess up a good relationship. It'll mess up good finances. All in your thinking. I'm going to say this, you get control of your thinking, you can get control of your life. I said, you get control over your thinking, you can get control of your life. Why right? you said, God, you come do this. No, you get control over your thinking. You can get control over your life. I can feel that devil up in here wanting to weigh things down. Yeah, I'm going to change everything because we're going to get control over our thinking. You're in a good house. You're under good leadership. All my staff get paid all the time, so I won't work. What's wrong with requiring the work that I'm paying for? If 
you got a bad attitude and you got a negative spirit, something's wrong with that. Let me, let me tell you what a negative spirit is, does. You get in direct departure, hidden like clockwork. A negative spirit because it got used 10 years ago. It got taken advantage 10 years ago. It starts rehearsing the 10 years ago and never recognize the consistency of direct deposit. It'll mess up a good opportunity. It'll start acting slothful in a place of consistency. It will start to think addressing things as abuse. Something's wrong with that attitude. Something's wrong with that way of thinking. Wrong thinking says when a person is trying to grow you, they're abusing you. We let Nick Saban groom them guys, but what about the church? There's something wrong with our thinking. You getting better by what I'm doing, so why you got a problem with what's going on? There's something wrong with our thinking. And it's not the devil outside. It's the devil between our two ears. That devil between our two ears will not allow us to recognize a great opportunity. It will always see something that doesn't exist. Here, I, I went home Sunday. Uh, I trimmed out a wall that I wanted to paint because I got about 35, 40 people coming tomorrow. I trimmed out a wall. Uh, this is Sunday after service. Uh, when did I paint that wall? Monday? I, I painted the wall Monday. Lady Darlene said the toilets weren't flushing fast enough. <laughs> I don't know what that got to do with anything, but they're not flushing fast, fast enough. So I changed, uh, I fixed five toilets to make them flush as fast as she wants them to flush. <laughs> I got a prepared message because I'm not lazy in my mind. I'm not, I'm not going to let negativity rob me of the day that I'm in. And see, if you don't get your mind right, you're going to miss the greatest blessing of your life. And I didn't call a plumber, so I don't have debt with a plumber. I am the plumber. I am the painter because I will not allow negativity to lock my mind down so I don't know how to use a paint roller. of you have missed out on God's giftings because you locked up in your mind. These guys that think can't nothing happen without them, they have lost their mind. That's negative thinking. Watch and see what happens. You won't paint, you better watch me with the breast. That wall, that wall looks real good. The, those toilets are, 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 are operating like clockwork on there. You, yeah, you see how happy she is? Let me tell you something. When you get your mind right, you stop thinking negative about positive things. There are people all around you that can get things done, but you got to start thinking positive so you can see what God wants to do in the midst of you. Okay. Meditating are rehearsing positive things in your mind. We'll produce praise. You, you don't know, sometimes I hear bad stuff all the way to church. So I had to shift my mind before I get to the platform. Heard, sometimes I hear so much negative. Oh. Saturday, it was painful. Because I was talking to a lady that was holding her dead baby. I'm on the phone with her and I'm praying with her and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, help me with this situation because I really don't know what to pray. Because she's holding a dead baby and she believes in the anointing on my life. What do I need to do? And I could not be negative in my thinking. Because if I was negative in my thinking, it wasn't going to go well. By the time I got off the phone, that woman who had that dead baby was on her way to recovery. So on Saturday, I'm walking her through that. Now, I got to still get her through tomorrow. I got to get her through tomorrow. So I have to be positive. 
I have to be positive. See, I ain't got time because you don't know who's going to call you. And probably you so negative, nobody calls you. So I'm walking this young mother through premature birth, five months old. The baby lives for a moment. I see the pictures. They send me pictures of the baby. And I got to walk them through. You can only do that when you're positive. If they ever gave you any more responsibility with the negativity in your life, would you be able to help somebody on a day like that? So what I had to do, I had to be positive about losing my mother. I had to be positive about losing two brothers in a week. I had to be positive. I had to be positive some kind of losing people that I love as members of the church, burying people that I wanted to stay with me the entire time. So I had to be positive. In a moment, I had to let go of every negative death spirit that was holding on to me and said, no, I got to give some encouragement right now. And see, you don't understand who's next that you're supposed to be encouraged and you're still morning because your mind because your mind won't let it go thoughts that produce a thankful heart I've been through just as much as you've been through but it's the way I see it that keeps me thriving it keeps me thriving. I've been betrayed so many times and being betrayed right now. But look at me. I'm still moving because for every, I almost said that, uh, for every individual that betrays me, God's got at least 20 that's going to be loyal. You, you understand? That's positive thinking. So go ahead and do what you're going to do so we can get you out of the way so I can get my other 20 to 30, if not 50. For every bastard, I received 10 sons. I just believe like that. I'm very positive like that. You, you don't, don't worry, men. The women will take over if you don't, uh, if you don't want to act right. Yeah, they already got an anointing on them. Have you not been watching what's going on? See, what you... So you got to understand something. I am not after a gender. I'm after what can I, can I get an anointing on it? Anything I can get an anointing on, I'm going to use. You ain't got me locked up. You never will have me locked up because as long as I'm positive in my thinking, I'll take the jawbone of an ass and I'll kill a thousand Philistines. You, do you understand that I'm so positive? I leave one battle going to the next battle, still giving God glory. See, you don't worry about the stuff going on. You get excited about your future and walk on your path. They don't know how many people are begging me to come work with me in ministry right now. They're begging me. Ask me, can we come? Can we come? Can we come? What can we do? They're begging me. They're begging me. They're begging me. Number three, let me see. Now, what if I would have got up? What if I got caught up in the last person that misused me? What, what if I would have lost all my confidence when I got betrayed the last time? You wouldn't exist. I see your folks back there, but you wouldn't exist with me if I didn't get past what they done to me prior to you coming around. That's why you got, you got to shape your mind. You got to get your mind right. Behind every betrayal, there's faithfulness. You got to know what comes after. I said, you got to know what comes after. What you've allowed, you allowed yourself to die in a moment. I got the rest of my life to live. I can't die in a moment. I got three minutes. Number three, the apostle Paul says, imitate him and the God of peace will be with you. And that's what he's saying in verse nine. 
This is the Apostle Paul talking to the church. And as he's talking to the church, he's telling them, you know what I said to you. You know what I taught you. You know what you've learned. You know what you received. You know what you've seen. If you do this, the God of peace will be with you just like he's with me. I want to tell you, I am an apostle. And you watch what I do. And you watch what, how I function. And you watch how I overcome the, the death of my father, the death of my mother, the death of my sibling. And, and in, in, in any death, you watch how I overcome. You want to know why? Because there's another day after today. And as long as there's another day after today, that means there's another day after that day for you. And if I can make it through, you can make it through. It's all based on the way you think about what you're dealing with. Those of you who want to be like your brother, that's not what he said. The Apostle Paul was a father. He wrote letters in prison. He had just been beaten and he was still encouraging the church. He was in prison and he, he corrected the church from prison. How do you correct the church from prison? You don't see yourself as a prisoner. Church could have said, well, you locked up. How are you going to speak to us? But he got bolder in his writing. Because even though I'm locked up, I'm free, baby. I'm freer than I've ever been in my entire life. What does he mean by freedom? I'm free in my mind. Slap somebody. Tell them, I'm free in my mind tonight. Find you somebody else that may not, that may not uh, understand what you said. Tell them, I'm free in my mind. No weapon formed against my mind shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against my mind shall be able to prosper. It's 8 o'clock, but I need about a hundred people that made up their mind that they're going to enjoy their Thanksgiving, break out in a Holy Ghost praise. I want you to remain safe during this holiday season. We have to protect ourselves, but we have to protect others as well. So join in with me and wear your mask. We're keeping everyone safe. God bless you. Refresh Family Church and Friends, show us your view. Let us know you are watching by posting a picture of you and your family as you stream our service. Make sure you use the hashtag, Let's Refresh, under your post so we can see your picture. As we continue to fellowship and worship together, remember our five goals are serving the needs of families, reaching the lost, equipping the saints, reaching the nations, and transferring to generations. Refresh Family Church is more than just a church. To find out how, visit our website at refreshfamily.church. Till next week, stay refreshed.